Welcome to the Bellingcat Starter Series. This series is aimed at non-technical researchers and journalists, and will help you overcome technical barriers when using some of Bellingcat's research tools. In this video, I'll guide you through installing Python, a programming language that is frequently used in open source research tools. Lots of Bellingcat's tools run on Python, but this doesn't mean you need to know how to program. It only means that Python needs to be installed on your device if you want to use our research tools. In this video, I'll show you how to install Python and how to access it on the command line. Hi there, my name's Galen Rouge, Tech Community Lead at Bellingcat, and this is the Bellingcat Tech Series, in which we help journalists and non-technical researchers get started with our open source research tools. In this video, we'll be starting by learning how to check if Python is already installed on your computer and whether or not you need to install a new version. Then we'll cover how to install the newest version of Python. On many systems, Python comes pre-installed, but sometimes it can be out of date, and sometimes it can be installed but not accessible on the command line. We're going to start by checking if Python is already installed and accessible on our systems using the command line. Let's open the command line. On Mac, you can do this using the program called Terminal, and in Windows, use the program PowerShell. Although they look slightly different, the commands we'll be using are all the same, so let's take a look. We'll try running the Python command and adding the version flag. You do this by typing Python dash dash version on the command line and pressing Enter. This command tries to find Python on your system and asks it what its version is. If it's installed, you'll see a response which will include the version number. For example, Python 3.12.1. If you see this, or a version number that starts with a 3, it means you have a version of Python 3 installed on your computer. If this command gives an error, or the version number starts with a 2, don't worry, you should just try the Python 3 command instead. Type Python 3 dash dash version, as before, if the command runs and shows you this or any version number that starts with a 3, it means you have a fairly recent version of Python installed on your computer. If there's an error, it means that a suitable version of Python isn't installed on your computer, and you'll need to try to get the latest version of Python 3. As a note, new versions of Python are being released regularly, and each is supported for about five years. At the time of recording, the oldest supported version of Python is 3.8, so you might still need to install a new version of Python, even if the version number starts with a 3. If you do have an up-to-date version of Python 3 installed on your system, that's great news. It means you should be able to install command line tools without any problems. One thing to keep in mind, though, is if you have to use the Python 3 command to access Python, you should use this command whenever instructions tell you to type Python. Otherwise, you risk using an out-of-date version of Python, which could cause problems down the line. We're going to start by covering Windows systems. Mac users can skip forward to the Mac Focus section by using the chapter marker on the timeline. Either way, let's get started with installing Python. You can download Python from the python.org website. Open up that site in your browser and head over to the download section. You'll want to download the installer that's right for your system. And for most modern computers, you can just click the big yellow button at the top of the page and the download should start. When the download's complete, you can run the installer by clicking on it in your browser's downloads folder. When the installer opens up, make sure to check the box that says add Python to path. This step is really important because it allows you to use Python from the command line without any additional setup. Click Install Now to begin the installation once you've done that though. And the install will now install Python on your system. It can take a few minutes, so try to be patient. Once the installation is complete, you'll see a message that says Setup was successful and you can now close the installer. To verify that Python has been installed correctly, you'll want to open up PowerShell. If you still had it open from before, like I do, you'll need to close and reopen it for the installation to take effect. And in some cases, you might even need to restart your computer. So with the command line open, you'll want to type Python space dash dash version like we did before and hit enter. 
Now if Python is installed correctly, you'll see a message showing the Python version number. Depending on your system, you might need to use Python 3 instead. That's it. You've successfully installed Python on your computer and verified that it's working correctly on the command line. You're now ready to start using Python-based tools. You can skip over the Mac focus section by jumping to the pip chapter marker on the timeline. You can download Python from the python.org website. Open it up in your web browser and head over to the download section of python.org. You'll need to download the installer that's right for your system. For most users of modern computers, you can just click the big yellow button at the top of the page and the download should start. When the download's complete, you can just run the installer by clicking on it in your browser's downloads folder. Click install now to be begin the installation process. The installer will now install Python on your system and it could take a few minutes, so try to be patient. Once the installation is complete, you'll see a message that says setup was successful and you can now close the installer. To verify that Python is installed correctly though, we will need to open up Terminal. If you still have it open from before, you'll need to close and reopen it for the installation to take effect. In some cases, you might even need to restart your computer. So on the command line, you'll need to type python dash dash version, like we did before, and hit enter. If Python is installed correctly, you'll see a message showing the Python version number. Depending on your system, you might also need to use Python 3 instead. That's it. You've successfully installed Python on your computer and verified that it's working correctly on the command line. You're now ready to start using Python-based tools. Now the installer has finished, you've got Python installed, but there's one more command line tool that should have been installed as well. It's called pip, which is the program that installs Python packages. You can make sure you've got pip available by running python-m ensure pip on the command line. Pip installs packages when you type pip install some package name. And this is the main way to get new tools. So you'll see this often in our other videos and guides. And that's it. With Python and pip installed, you're ready to use Bellingcat's open source research tools. To get started with our tools, check out our range of guides and other videos. You could even try one of the videos on screen now. I hope you find this to be a good start to your journey and that it helps lay the groundwork for using open source research tools for amazing investigations. If you have any questions or get stuck, we have an active and helpful community in our Discord server. You can also find all Bellingcat's tools on our GitHub links.